Picture this, a 230-foot tall rocket screaming back from orbit at nearly 17,000 miles per hour, slams into Earth's atmosphere, survives a fireball of plasma, reignites its engines, and then tries to land delicately on four skinny legs in the middle of the ocean. Sounds insane, right? Like balancing a pencil on your fingertip while it's on fire, except the pencil weighs 1.2 million pounds at liftoff. And yet, SpaceX has made it routine. But here's the twist. Those landing legs you see splaying out like mechanical bird wings, they are not just for show. Every bolt, every hinge, every pound had to be sweated over by engineers. And trust me, the decisions behind their design were anything but simple. So today, let's pull back the curtain and uncover why Falcon 9's landing legs look the way they do, why they're so light yet so strong, and why SpaceX almost gave up on legs entirely. Stick with me, because the story behind those four legs is crazier than you think. In fact, one design would have made Falcon 9 look like a giant flying spider. But more on that later. First, let's start with the obvious question. Why legs at all? Back in the early 2010s, when Elon Musk was tweeting about rockets landing themselves, the space community rolled its eyes. The How shuttle had wings, so I used parachutes, Blue I mean, Origin guys... went tiny with New Shepard, but a first stage booster landing on legs? Absurd. But here's the problem SpaceX was solving. Parachutes don't work well for a 130-foot-tall rocket stage traveling at hypersonic speeds. The mass-to-surface area ratio is just brutal. You'd need parachutes bigger than the Empire State Building. Not practical. Landing wings? Hmm, possible. But wings add drag going up, require heat shielding, and worst of all, they're dead weight for 99% of the mission. So the SpaceX team asked, what's the lightest, simplest hardware we can bolt onto Falcon 9 so it doesn't fall over like a drunk giraffe when it lands? The answer, legs. Not just any legs, deployable, retractable, carbon fiber, and aluminum legs that weigh just under 4,600 pounds combined. For context, that's less than 3% of Falcon 9's dry mass. That's like scrapping a bicycle to the side of a bus and still making it fly. But here's where things get tricky. Those legs had to support a booster weighing more than 56,000 pounds during landing, and the rocket doesn't exactly land gently. Let's crunch some numbers. Falcon 9 lands with a vertical velocity of about 6.5 feet per second, roughly a jogging pace. Doesn't sound like much until you realize you're bringing down a 56,000 pound empty booster. Force equals mass times acceleration. That landing impact, roughly 100,000 to 120,000 pounds of force distributed across four legs. So each leg has to hold the equivalent weight of about 15 Toyota Corollas stacked on top of it. Now, that's just static load. Add wind shear, tilt angles, ship deck movement, and you're looking at dynamic loads that can spike much higher. This is why SpaceX went with carbon fiber reinforced aluminum honeycomb for the legs. Super strong, super light. The same materials Formula One cars and fighter jets use. Oh, and those giant black cylinders at the hinge? That's not decoration. Those are titanium shock absorbers, custom built to soak up impact energy. Think of them like the suspension on a mountain bike, except they're absorbing the slam of a rocket stage that just fell from space. And if you're wondering, why don't the legs retract after landing, like airplane landing gear? Well, SpaceX tried, and the results weren't pretty. All right, so why fix deployable legs instead of retractable ones? The answer is good old-fashioned weight and complexity. Retractable landing gear requires motors, gears, hydraulics, and extra structure. That means more mass. And in rocketry, every extra pound means less payload to orbit. Remember, Falcon 9's whole business model relies on reusability and affordability. So, SpaceX said, keep it simple. 
the legs are stowed flat against the booster's side during ascent. Then a pneumatic system blasts them outward during landing. Boom, no motors, no hydraulics, just compressed helium. Now here's a fun fact. The legs deploy in less than 1.5 seconds. Any slower and the booster risks tipping. That's faster than most people can open an umbrella. But there's a catch. Once deployed, the legs don't fold back. That's why you see boosters coming back into port on drone ships with legs still sticking out like a giant barbecue skewer rack. They actually have to be detached by ground crews. Elon once joked that Falcon 9 would look cooler with legs that tucked back in like Iron Man suit. But when they crunched the numbers, engineers realized it would eat into payload capacity. And for customers, payload equals money. So, sorry Iron Man, payload wins. It's like skipping legs and just having your mom catch you when you fall. But for Falcon 9, legs were the perfect stepping stone. They made reusability real, they saved billions in launch costs, and they paved the way for Starship's crazy future. And here's my favorite stat. SpaceX claims each Falcon 9 booster can fly up to 20 times. With a cost of around $62 million per launch, that's billions saved, thanks in part to four skinny legs. So next time you see a Falcon 9 booster touching down, don't just clap at the landing. Remember the engineering decisions baked into those legs. The materials, the physics, the trade-offs. It's the perfect example of SpaceX's philosophy. Simplicity beats complexity, if you can make it work. And here's a fun image to leave you with. Somewhere in Hawthorne, there's probably a sketch of Falcon 9 with eight spider legs. Thank goodness that one never made it past the drawing board. So, what do you think? If you were designing Falcon 9's legs, would you have gone with Iron Man retractables or SpaceX's keep it simple approach? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And hey, if this video stood firmly on four legs of good content, give it a like, subscribe for more spaceflight deep dives, and I'll see you in the next mission breakdown.